EDI stands for Essential Divers Information. The EDI is more than a usual dive computer. Additionally to the data about the maximum dive time and decompression dives, the EDI provides information about the tank pressure. With the fast coupling, the EDI is connected to the high pressure ports of your regulator, so the EDI is enabled to indicate the tank pressure. On the surface, the EDI is switched on by linking the two sensors for one second. In the water, the EDI switches on automatically and switches to dive mode automatically after nine seconds. Let's now go for a dive with the EDI. You can recognize that we are now in dive mode by this symbol. On the clearly arranged display of the EDI, you can find a multitude of information. In the middle, as the most prominent information, you'll find the current depth in meters. At the right side, the maximum depth is also indicated in meters. Directly above, the past dive time is indicated in minutes. In the lower right, the current tank pressure is indicated in bar. The single-chip low-power processor of the EDI calculates the tank pressure every 15 seconds. In the lower left, by showing NDL, the EDI indicates the remaining maximum dive time. NDL means no decompression limit. During our dive, while dive time and depth are increasing, the NDL is decreasing. The NDL is approaching its end, we should ascend to a shallower depth if we don't want to do a decompression stop. We decide to reconcile ourselves with a required decompression stop and have now reached the end of the maximum dive time. The NDL is now zero and we have to do a decompression stop on our ascent. This is indicated by the following readings. The maximum dive time, NDL, changes to the total ascent time, ASC. Simultaneously with the depth of the next decompression stop, which is now at 3 meters, the ASC is flashing warningly once every second. ASC indicates our total ascent time, which includes the time needed for decompression stops, as well as the time needed for ascending. As we now already have to do a decompression stop at 6 meters, we decide to begin our ascent. During the ascent, the arrow at the right edge can come into operation. The reason for this can be an excessive ascent speed. You have to reduce your ascent speed now until the downwards pointing arrow stops flashing. Another reason could be that you've already ascended above the currently allowed minimum depth, the so-called ceiling. In this case, the downwards pointing arrow also starts flashing and therefore gives a warning against danger. Descend immediately until the arrow stops flashing. We have now finished our decompression stop at 6 meters, but still have to do a stop at 3 meters. Now the symbol for the tank pressure is flashing warningly as the tank pressure is less than 50 bar. Now at the latest you should terminate your dive and start ascending. We are now approaching our last decompression stop. After the stop has been completed and the NDL indication has become visible again, we can emerge. On the surface, the EDI automatically changes to surface mode after 4 minutes and 15 seconds and switches off automatically after another 4 minutes and 15 seconds. After the EDI is switched off, it can be activated again by linking the two sensors for one second. This gets you to surface mode, which is shown by the abbreviation SURF. By linking both sensors for one second, you can call up the following information. First, the EDI scrolls the current maximum dive times for the depths from 12 to 45 meters, which depend on the nitrogen saturation of your body tissues. 
In case you are not allowed to fly after the dive, the do not fly warning appears on the display. The do not fly warning is displayed until the risk of decompression sickness caused by reduced pressure on the plane will be negligible. On the surface, the EDI measures the air temperature in degrees Celsius. Now the abbreviation FLT, or flight, appears in the middle of the display. In the lower left, the time you have to wait until flying is indicated in hours. This is the same duration of time which is needed for eliminating the nitrogen which has been absorbed into your body during the dive. If there is a prohibition to fly while still outgassing, this will, in surface mode, always be indicated by the do not fly warning. By linking the sensors for one second, you get to history mode, the logbook mode of the EDI. Here you can call up the information concerning your previous dives. In the logbook, which is indicated by the symbol log in the middle of the display, the EDI stores the following data about the last six dives. The number of the dive, the reached maximum depth in meters, and the dive time in minutes. The log display changes every five seconds to the display INT and back. INT stands for interval and indicates the time you spent on the surface between two dives. The surface interval time for the last dive increases until you begin a new dive or until the elimination of nitrogen from your body is completed. In case one of the dives has been a repetitive dive, this will be indicated by the abbreviation REP and this information will also be stored in the logbook. The symbol REP is also displayed constantly in the dive mode of a repetitive dive. If you link the two sensors again for one second, the EDI respectively changes to the next logbook entry. After the logbook, the EDI shows in its long-term store the reached maximum depth, the quantity of all dives, and the sum of all dive times in hours. After this, you can get back to surface mode, marked by SURF, and therefore to an access menu with which you can activate the high altitude program or the sea level program of the EDI. They are marked by ALT on the display. The symbols on off are flashing in sequence every four seconds. If you want to activate the high altitude program, please link the sensors when the mountain symbol and on are being displayed. As a special quality of the EDI, you'll now see the change of battery and the fast coupling. The change of battery, which will only be necessary every three years, you can manage yourself easily. Before opening the EDI, please observe the following. Rinse the EDI with fresh water and wipe it dry with a soft cloth. Open the battery compartment only in a dry and dust-free surrounding so that you can avoid a short circuit or damaging the O-ring. Please use only CR2430 batteries. Your Scuba Pro dealer or any other specialized dealer will provide you with them. Now open the lid at the back with a coin. Lift the lid from the casing. Then press the battery with your finger from the upper left to the lower right and push the battery out of the casing. The battery is put in by simply pushing it in the opening between the two metal clasps. After this, close the lid again tightly with the coin. Finally, we'll acquaint you with the fast coupling. Before you start the fast coupling, spread some silicone fat on the O-ring before installing it. Now you can connect the EDI to the high pressure ports of the first stage. Proceed as follows. Attach part one of the fast coupling with a bifurcated wrench to the high pressure ports of your first stage. Now you can connect the EDI with the second part of the fast coupling to the high pressure ports. Simply screw the screw cap on the first part of the fast coupling manually. For security reasons, the thread is a left thread. Check before each dive if the screw cap is fastened tightly. If this is not the case, the fastening ball can't be pressed open completely, which may cause false indications of the tank pressure. 
Even under pressure, the fast coupling can be fastened or loosened manually. Now you're acquainted with all functions of the EDI. Please still read the enclosed directions carefully. We hope that you'll have many beautiful and exciting dives with your new EDI.